day is a day for me to give God another thank and praise. I don't need Thanksgiving to do that. But God has been good to us. He's been merciful. He's been kind. He's been gracious. He's been long-suffering with us. He's been our healer when we need him. He's been our lawyer in the courtroom. Somebody should give him a wave off him. And I'm gonna call on Brother Terrence in a minute because he's got a Thanksgiving break. Had a situation I talked about it on Bible study a couple of weeks ago. Someone accused me of whatever I don't know what I was doing. Back into a car. I knew I'd done that. It was obvious, everything. Some of y'all have had some old vendors too. So vendor vendors, you know, nobody was trying to get, but you know, people today are always trying to get more. And when I was teaching that night, I didn't, I had never heard the whole uh, voicemail that was left on my phone by the turn. But the thing had been in the courts down in Baltimore. And this one day I just decided, to, let me play that tape. Let me see what the voicemail said. And it said, your case was dismissed.
and uh, that's the, the plate down to my mother. So we went down, got the plate off to my mother. Amen. Come back home, praise the God, enjoy the evening. Yes. Yes. We early, we go to sleep early. Amen. Amen. So as we end the day, my wife gets a call. She held my hand. I knew something was wrong with this. When she does that, it's the problem. So, she said, your mother's crying out for help. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Immediately, we get out. Get to the truck. We go to 95. I'm asking the Lord for travel emergencies. And I'm going well over 90. You can testify to that pastor. So, when I'm down 95, I'm going back and forth to work. Asking God for travel emergencies. I get to fill it up in in less than 30 minutes. That's nothing about God. So, we get us here. The ambulance is already there. there. Of course, I'm emotional. I'm an emotional person. I'm crying. I'm disturbed. So, the lady next door, Miss Katie, she works at Presbyterian. She said, do not take her to Mr. Courtney. I don't know if y'all know about Mr. Courtney, but it's not a good hot. So, they take her to Presbyterian. Uh, Presbyterian. I follow behind the ambulance. I'm so nervous. I go up the ramp behind the ambulance, knowing that I'm not supposed to. But thank God, he kept me in my right mind. Yeah. So, I try to go in the emergency room because of the COVID-19. Can't do that. So I'm praying. Asking God, please, don't let this take place. And I can't take it. So God said, listen, be still. In the midst of it, he still didn't know that I'm God. So what am I going to do? The Lord said, took me to the word of God, to the book of Ezekiel. He told Ezekiel to speak to those five bones. You speak to the situation. So symbolically, I held my mother up with my hands and said, listen, Lord, the word shall not return void. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. I just believe the blood of Jesus over her whole body in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I go back to the book of Psalms, but it's at this poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him. And delivered him out of all his fear in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I waited patiently. There's nothing I can do. I, when I called the line, the nurses said, Listen. We're working on it. We're, working, we're waiting for the MRI. So, I'm still waiting, still praying, still believing. So, God is dropping my spirit. Continue to pray. Just continue to pray. As I pray, just believe in God, something just took place in the atmosphere. See, when you call on the name of Jesus, the atmosphere has to change. The atmosphere has to change. The atmosphere has to change. All things have to change when you call on that name. When you call on that name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When you call on that name of Jesus, something has to change. No matter what you want to do. Here it is. The prayer report. This morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As I was reading, reading the word, I went to the book of Matthew. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. He said, speak to the situation. Hallelujah. I called my mom for the first time in a year. In a year. So the enemy shut down my mother's communication between me and her. But that's another testimony. That God is good. Amen. I called the number. She said, hello, son. Just the spirit that I'm talking to you. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. And I thank God for my wife that she's a prayer warrior. Because when I'm strong, when I'm not strong, she's there. Hallelujah. And I thank God for her. I just thank God for her in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's been a long, long, long road between the relationship between me and my mother. I just want to keep it honest. Because the enemy is busy. The enemy is busy things. So if we can just stay together and pray, God will move. Right now my mother's in the hospital resting. So 
unbelief in God just to completely heal her. In the name of Jesus. Walk out in the hospital in the name of Jesus. Because it's going to be glory after this. It's going to be glory after this. Hallelujah. It's going to be glory. It's going to be glory. That devil is alive. That devil is alive. If one can be a thousand, like two can be ten thousand, like I'm going to say, Hallelujah. 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 Brother Peter, you said nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. We continue to pray and believe God. My mother just sitting in here. I asked God to talk in her heart to open up the line of communication. Hallelujah. Because God is good. Yeah. See, God's timing is not our time. Come on. It's not our time. His time is perfect. Look, he might not come when you come when you want him, but he's a right on time God. Hallelujah. He's a good God. No matter what it looks like, he's a good God. Bishop, Bishop preached a couple of Sundays ago about increasing your faith. That was a word for me, Bishop. Increase my faith. That's what I asked the Lord to do. Increase my faith. Without faith, it's impossible. Somebody say it's impossible. It's impossible to please God. So we have to walk in faith. Now, is it going to be hard? Of course it's going to be hard. But no weapon formed against me. It may form, but it will not prosper in the name of Jesus. Because he's a good God. He's a good God. He sits high, sick, and he's, he looks low. He's a good God. So I just want to give God glory right now. Because he deserves all our praise. He deserves all our praise. He's an amazing God. No matter what it looks like. No matter what it looks like. No matter what storm comes your way. Hallelujah. He's a good God. In the name of Jesus. And I give him glory and praise and honor. And I thank you, Lord, that the battle is not mine. It's yours, Lord. And as I was praying this morning, I see the angels around my mother's bed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Just looking over her in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
forgiveness, God's grace, His mercy, His long suffering, and God's going to repair that relationship between you and your mom. I wish my son was still alive to say something to me, anything. But while you got to cherish her, cherish her, pray for her, and in, in the Lord will strengthen your relationship. I trust and believe that God is going to work that out. Amen, amen. This is our day. You just keep on being that, that woman of wisdom. Woo. That way out, girl. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Sometimes you got to step in and we got to be the arm of the the back there and everything. But, but whatever God gives us to do, we can do it because we are strong in Christ. Amen? Come on, baby, say something. We strong warriors. Come on, baby. Fierce women, come on! This morning we want to be praying for Sister Dorothy and Sister Josephine. Some things are going on, but God is good, and He is a prayer answering God, and He is an on time God. So we expect God to do some miracles in their life. Amen. Continue praying for the Taylors. We know their situation. Sister Carla Kane is recovering. She's doing pretty good now. Um, I've been in touch with her off and on, so let's continue to pray uh, that the Lord can strengthen her lungs and give her the strength that she needs to start moving around again. Amen? amen. We must continue to pray for Bishop Douglas Yancey. Amen? amen. Uh, strive to be a maid, not great one, but they're being made. And he will, some things are happening this week, prayerfully, he'll be going home on long term care at home. Amen? So we need to continue to pray for Lady Lisa, Mount Mariah, and that entire family. We, I don't think any of us can understand what they're going through right now. Because uh, we're not in that seat. Amen? But just put yourself in somebody else's shoes every now and then. And then, you know, you, if you're a compassionate person, you will pray. You will not ask a lot of questions, but just pray that the Lord's will be done. Amen? So right now, we really just want to continue to lift all of them up in prayer as the Lord is doing what he's going to do. Amen. Amen. Continue praying for Mother Audrey Younger. We know that she lost her mother a uh, month or so, a couple months now. Uh, but we want to continue praying for her. She's really going through some things. But we know that God is able to heal and comfort us even in our time of loss. We've all lost someone but it's something when you lose your mother, and your mother lived to be 100. I don't think anybody in here has had a mother that lived to be 100 years old. But to say that you lost your mom at 100 is a great loss. Amen? Amen. We want to continue pray for her. Also, the lots, I believe Brother Jerome is going to be having a receipt or it's coming up. I believe that's coming up. I want to be praying for them. And there's some unspoken requests that I'm not going to give no names, because once you give a name, people start running and tapping and tipping and trying to figure out what's going on. But you know who you are. But there are some unspoken requests that are in the house this morning. Amen? And they're unspoken because I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> God is good. Sometimes we don't need details. We just need to know that we need to pray. Just pray. Somebody's health is being challenged. Pray. Somebody's finances is being challenged. Pray. Somebody about to lose their mind. Pray. Somebody give God a praise in the house this morning. God of love. He's the God of comfort. She's not there. Mother Greg. Um, he's a God of comfort. He's a God of love. No matter what we're going through, he's able to take us through. And I thank him for every test that I've had. I thank him for every trial that I've had to endure. I thank him as a teenager having a rough, a rough early start because it's giving me a better, smoother finish at the end of my days rather than in the beginning. When you thought it was all over, God said, not so. I will still be there for you. You're still my child. You're still my daughter. Somebody came in here today and you felt like it's just about all over and nobody cared. But God can take it from the bottom. He can take it from down there and lift you up. Only by his power. Only by 
by his might and only by his love. Give God a praise as we go before the throne of grace today. Praise the Lord, church. Come on, let's give God some praise for this house. We serve an awesome Lord. We've been through many trials and tribulations. But through it all, God makes us strong. We throw it all, God allows us to continue to praise and worship this holy name. As we go today, Thanksgiving is every day. As we heard the EK say, when you wake up, tell the Lord thank you. Many didn't wake up, God.
put your hands together. We got praise for this Congress. This wonderful acts the Lord took her in. It's a day of Thanksgiving. It's a day that we ought to give God praise. And thank you for all that he's done. Thank you. Just another day that the Lord has Hallelujah. If when you give the best of your servants telling the world that to say not dismayed when men won't believe you he'll understand and say well done Yeah. 
I, I'm just glad to be alive. I'm going to talk about it in my sermon today. A -a Amen. I want to uh, thank those of you uh, who have stepped out on faith and grace and safety of the Lord to be here today uh, while uh, the uh, pandemic, the numbers are spiking and going up, but uh, by his grace, he's keeping us. He's, keep, he's keeping us, and uh, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for traveling mercies. Uh, uh, the traveling mercies that did go away. We did go away. The Lord has brought us back safely, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. I want to thank everyone uh, for your eyes and offering. Many are not here, uh, but if you will still be so kind and uh, to use our cash app. Uh, dollar sign, highway word of faith, uh, and, or give the five. I'm glad I just said that. I just looked down on my phone. I have the Facebook on my phone. Try to share it. Have a watch party. If you have it on your phone, share it. Have a watch party. But those of you that are listening and looking at Facebook, I've said this before. There is right now, y'all forgive me, this is a public service announcement. There's something, someone, Ancho Bolano, I guarantee it, but I, I hate to say this, but uh, uh, anyhow, I won't say who they are. I don't know them, but I know where most of the, uh, the hacking and stuff come from, okay? Um, and it says, uh, it uses one of our members' name, message, this on Instagram, Mike, John 684, or on this number, is a number. He just helped me with 2500 into my cash app account. That's a Facebook, that's a bare lie. Okay? Don't fall for any of that stuff. Don't call those numbers that, that you don't know about. Don't call those numbers. Don't text nothing. And talk about you got packages. We got packages that we want to deliver to you. Text this number. Don't text it. I get it all the time. Don't text anything. If you got a package for me, get it to me. All, 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 all right, you know, twenty-five hundred dollars of your cash app. It's a bare-faced lie. Don't fall for that. If they send me a check, I got I got proof at home. Uh, they sent me a check. Was that thirty-six thousand, honey, or uh, three thousand? It was a, it was a lot of money. They sent me a check, FedEx, FedEx. They came on a Saturday. I think it was like $36,000 and, and some change. Uh, I had been online, you know, looking for a little job or something. They said, well, you know, you fit all of our profile. And, and, and then watch this. Somebody need to hear this. Somebody get, go get burnt. Somebody got burnt. You know, uh, uh, you fit all the profile. And, and, and watch this. how silly this is. He says, what, what, what all you have to do, and we're going to pay you $700, a week, and all you have to do is get the mail from the post office and send the mail over to me. And, and you know, this is what we're going to pay you. Well, if the mail coming to the post office to me, you want me to send it to you, why don't you just get it sent to you? Am I crazy? Am I crazy? The check was $37,000, and they happened to have a company in Delaware. I'm going like, okay, you know, all they want you to do is put it in the account, and then both is gone. Uh, I went to the company and I looked at her and said, hey, you, you sent me this check? He said, sir, that, you know, that is bogus. If you put that in there, you know, we're going to cancel that and so on and so forth. So it's on the Facebook here, and uh, not that much uh, money. 2500 in cash app. It's not going to happen, folks. Uh, uh, if it's too good to be true, it ain't true. All uh, right, now let's get spiritual. Luke chapter number 17. I was spiritual when I was there. I'm trying to help somebody. I don't know, I know, I know folks that got burnt. I know folks that got burnt. If it sounds too good to be true, ain't nobody giving you $2,500. Did you hear what I said? You, you know, uh, uh, my wife ain't asking me for $2,500. Not at one time. Brent, uh, in the book of Numbers, chapter number 17. Let's remember those that we don't see and to be praying for them, praying for uh, uh, Mother Testing led better than Mother of our church. 
pray for them, family that's clearly, family that all uh, haven't talked to them in a while, but we just keep, keep praying. Somebody prayed for me. And they had me on the, that's the, on the arrow bar. Luke 17 and 11. And my time is up. I had one preacher. He said, I, it was an afternoon service when I was assistant pastor and bridegroom in Philadelphia. I said, now come on, Doc. You ain't going to be long. You ain't going to be long today. You know, I know afternoon service. No, 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 no. He said, I promise you. He read one scripture. I forget what the title was. And he read that and he sat down. I ain't going to sit down that quick. Luke 17 and 11. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem. That he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. I'm going back to there. I'm going back to there. Don't you just pay attention? And as he passed through the midst of the Samaria Galilee, he was on his way to Jerusalem. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they, the reason they stand afar off, I've had the experience while in India. Uh, to be with people who had leprosy, the people who had leprosy, and, and the services was up in the tent and everything. They had to sit in a certain section, and they had to eat to themselves. There were limbs and things missing, discoloration. You could see all of, all of that. I, I, so I had that experience. And he says, the Bible says, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, as they went, they were clean. Some folks think they can't be healed unless somebody put lay their hand on them. All these have to do is just speak the word. As they went, he healed them as they went. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice and glorified God. And God wanted me to be quiet. Fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Samaritans didn't have anything to deal with with the Jews. Jesus answered and said, Where were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There were not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. In other words, there's only one that came back to say thank you. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. I'm going back to there as well. Thy faith hath made thee whole. You don't have to turn to it, but you'll, you'll know it when I begin to read it. First Thessalonians chapter number 5, verse 18 says, In Everything give thanks. But this is the will of God, in the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, not because of everything, but in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I want to ask you a question today. Where are the nine? Where's the rest of you? Where the, where, where the, rest, where the rest of you? He keep you been wearing some nice ties. You stealing them from somebody? <laughs> somebody helping you pick them out. <laughs> of the truth, we can honestly say that this year, 2020, has been like nothing we have seen or experienced in all of our lives. If you're like me, your prayer is, Lord, lift us up from this and keep us as only you can do in a time like this. I come to tell you this time, this pandemic, this era that we are living in, can't nothing keep you like the Lord. You can't see it. You can't smell it, you can't taste it, you can't feel it, but you're always running away from it. Uh, 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 
y'all don't give me. You're running away from me. I ain't got time uh, to gain no new friends. I'm walking away from folk that don't have masks on. Uh, y'all don't give me. Uh, I believe the Lord allows us to go through some things to remind us who is keeping and protecting us. And that it should cause a praise and a prayer of thanksgiving to come forth out of our mouth. Right, it said, if it had not been for the Lord, and I'm almost done, if it had not been for the Lord that was on our side, tell me where, where would I be if he wasn't keeping me, keeping us and protecting us, where would we be? I believe the Lord allows us to go through these things. To remind us, I hope you remember the song I shared with you on last week just before the sermon, the sermon the talking about this time of restoration. The words said, when you come into his presence, lifting up the name of Jesus, my wife told me when I got to Florida to meet my family uh, that they were watching it, uh, watching the, the service. He said, when I started playing that song, everybody started getting up, dancing and shouting and giving God praise. Hallelujah. When you come into his presence, lifting up the name of Jesus, and you hear the music playing, and you see the people dancing, just forget about your words. Let your troubles fall behind you. Don't you wait another minute. Just get up on your feet and make his name glory. His name glorious, make his name glorious. Uh, uh, amen. Lady Christine, I, I, I saw your post last night and it touched my heart. He was saying to her and her husband, I, I, I don't know if he was there, uh, her husband, they were riding down the highway and they had to pull over because there was an accident and a car was turned upside down and when they went by, they saw bodies on the road covered with sheep. Oh, y'all don't hear me. My wife will tell you, we back uh, 30 or uh, 40 or some years ago, uh, I was on the road uh, preaching. I worked my job, and then on the weekend, I was all over the place, driving all over the place. That wasn't the day that they sent you the airline tickets. It was days that you stayed in people's houses and you drove. I would drive over 100,000 miles a year. And I used to tell her, I said, I believe that's how I'm going to leave this earth in, a, in an automobile accident. But thank God he has protected me and he has kept me. Because you don't have to be on the highway to be in an accident to lose your life. Oh, uh, uh, y'all don't hear me. You know, statistics say that most accidents occur within five miles of your house. I don't know if you heard the story. The mother uh, wrote the son a message that was away at school said, son, I want, you to get, I want you to have our new address. The father just found out that most accidents happen within five miles of your house, so we moved. Some of y'all catch that later. When we talk about making his name glorious, <laughs> we are stating that the name, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, that the name of Jesus is worthy of all glory and all honor. I heard somebody calling on the name of Jesus today. They know that there's power in the name. His name is marked by great beauty. His name is marked by splendor. His name is marked by being magnificent. When we think about the Son of God, his position and responsibility for salvation, we ought to give him thanks. Nobody ever cared for me like Jesus. No one ever been so kind as he. Psalm 119, 71 talks about it and the psalmist says, it was good for me that I had been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you go through something, when he brings you through something, it makes you look back to see where he brought you from and to give you a praise of thanksgiving. Amen. One old songwriter used to say, how did you feel when you came out of the wilderness? 
leaning on the Lord. I felt like shouting. I felt like dancing. But sometimes you gotta take a look back to see how good God's been to you and where you brought you from. Hallelujah. Uh, the word tells us that the Lord has highly exalted him and has given him a name that is above and greater than any other name. And at the name of Jesus, somebody say Jesus. Now you didn't say it good enough. Somebody say Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory and honor of God. There is something about that name. There is something about the name, something about the name, something about the name Jesus. Now, I would encourage you later on uh, to go home and uh, Google uh, Bishop Rance Allen, Google his funeral, Google some of his messages and some of his services. And you know, uh, he's, he's the one that's saying that song, oh, how I love that name Jesus. That man can go five or ten octaves, but there was something when he called on the name Jesus. When you call on the name Jesus, demons have to pack up. Hallelujah. You call on the name Jesus, sickness has to take time to move away. Y'all don't hear me. Uh, if this is not enough to put you in the spirit of thanksgiving, I don't know what else can. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we become so complacent and so used to things until we forget to say thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fact that you woke up this morning, uh, somebody I got news yesterday, uh, folks that were connected to you news yesterday, somebody didn't wake up yesterday. Uh -huh. I, since I've been gone, there have been some more that have lost their lives. But thank God I'm still here. Lord, I just want to thank you. Thank God. I, I don't need you to ask me to lift my hands and give them a prayer. I'm just glad I'm able to lift my hands. I'm, I'm glad that I'm able to open my mouth. When I say of the goodness of Jesus. Uh, yes, 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 yes. And, and the lady that we got news about that passed uh, just yesterday was on dialysis and been there for a while. I know what it's like to be on dialysis. You don't know. If you haven't been there, you don't know what it does to you. But I know what it's like. But because of his goodness, because of his mercy, because of his kindness, I woke up not on dialysis anymore. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. You need to find a reason to tell you. You need to find a reason. You need to take a look over your life and find a reason to get in the way off. You need to find a reason to testify and say, I thank the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. You need to find a reason. I'm not saying Oh, yeah, don't get so complacent, so used to things that you forget to tell it thank you. Yeah. One writer said, Ha, ah, can I say thanks for the many things you have done for me? Things so undeserved that you prove your love for me. The voices of a million angel could not express my gratitude. All that I have, all that I ever hope to be. It all to be to God be the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I, I just think, my uh, I'm just thinking about where, where I came from. I, I'm just thinking about that little red wagon uh, pulling for surplus food. Y'all don't hear me. Come on, Red! Pennsylvania. Come on! And God brought me out of there. And then when he brought me out of there, he took me somewhere. And he blessed me. I got something to fight you for. Don't forget where you come from. Come on, Red! Lord, you can count on me. I don't know where the rest of them are. I don't know where the numbers are. I don't know why nobody else wants to tell you that. But oh, God, you can count on me to give you a praise, to give you a thanks.
you have done so much for me. Come on, man. And I can't tell it off. Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! I stood here all day long. I couldn't tell you. Come on. Yeah, yeah, you're done for me. You have done for me. Ain't so undeserved. I want to know today. Oh, just give me a few more minutes. Come on, man. Leave you alone. Come on, man. Hallelujah. Oh. If you got to go, go ahead and go. Oh, man. 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 You just go ahead on the floor. There will be a few, but just gonna stay for just a few minutes. I want to know today. Can you prove just how much you love him? Woo! Can you prove? Come on, Red. Just how much you love him. Can you prove? Can you do it? You know, can, can, can you do the unexpected? Hallelujah. Not believe what the folks are no, we, we were away. We were away uh, in, in, in Florida. And uh, I, I rented this, <clears throat> I rented this big uh, a seven bedroom house and five or six bathrooms and an indoor pool and all of that. I, I, I told my grandkids that I, I, I said, uh, hey, you know, I, I, I'm just, I had a good week. I, I liked y'all last week. I saw a Walmart and uh, I, I went on down to the Walmart to get two things, just get a couple of things, you know, by myself. I tried to get some brands to go with me, they wouldn't go with me. But uh, uh, I, I don't know if that was where it was, maybe it was. Uh, but, I, but when I was going around, I, 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 saw, I saw some flowers in there. You hear what I said? I, I saw some flowers and I said to myself, I said, you know, if I bring these back to the house, I said to myself, if I bring these back to the house, I think I'll be able to brighten somebody's corner. Y'all don't hear me. You know, my wife likes the flowers, like the flowers. Uh, and then, you know, was, we had a few days, she tried to figure out how she's going to get the flowers back to the house. I'm going to leave the flowers there. Leave it for the next people coming in the house. You can take the flowers on the CD or 
something here for the church. That James Brown thing, I feel good. Like I knew that I would. Da, 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 da. Uh, what y'all say? Ooh. Uh, I, I, I thought this was the church. I, 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 it is the church. Come on, man. And me telling myself that I feel good is spiritual. Because he being God knows everything, 
knew that somebody needed him to come through Samaria and Galilee, even though they had nothing to do with each other. He went another way. Sometimes the Lord will change the lessons for your deliverance. I don't know why Jesus loved me. I don't even know why he even cared, but oh, Don't push me on the floor. Don't do it. Amen. I'm so glad that he did. You see, when he went another way, he found ten men in need. That's not the real story. Y'all don't hear me. That's not the real story here. The story is that only one took the time to come back to say thank you. Uh-huh. It wasn't about the whole ten, but story was about the one that had enough sense to go back and say thank you. Well, he says, and the Lord says, he said, where were there not ten of you? When I came up with not ten of you in the situation that needed help, he said, where are the nine? The Lord said, watch this now, the Lord said, all but because you came back to say thank you, your faith has made you whole. There's one thing to get a touch, but it's a different thing to be made whole. To be made whole, delivered, and set free. You don't want to get a touch, but you want a deliverance.
in everything, in everything, give him thanks. Hallelujah. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for he has given Jesus Christ his son Testify about a little bit of everything. And 
things that I can't testify about. Yes. But we was all born in sin. Yes, sir. I was on my way to hell just like you were. Yes, sir. Come on, Red. Come on. Woo! Yes, sir. You might have been shooting them up, uh -huh. pulling them up, drinking them up, or whatever sin. stuff that I've never done. Yes, sir. But if I didn't repent and to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin, be filled with the Holy Ghost, yes, sir. I would be sitting right in yes, hell with the drug addict, with the alcoholic, yes, with all the women. You notice I said I'd be sitting in hell, but, but, but y'all, I was saying, I'm gonna let it go. Y'all don't think anybody's going to hell. Everybody's going to heaven. Everybody's going to heaven. That's, that's what everybody believes. I can say hell has the largest itself. And somebody, the think they're going to heaven, they're gonna find out they're gonna make a big wrong turn. A, a wrong turn and ended up in a place. If you have not been born again of water and of spirit, today is your day to say yes to the Lord. Yes to his will. Yes to his way. And don't be part of the nun. And don't take time to tell the Lord thank you. Amen. Thank you. Everybody, with my hands in the earth.